I could not be more excited to experience alongside you guys today the first 8K consumer television, the Q900R series from Samsung. It has a whopping 33 million pixels. Now to be clear, we've seen 8K displays before, but only on the desktop at sizes that are so small that you couldn't possibly hope to get any benefit from it. This, this promises to be different. So in today's video, sponsored by Samsung, we're gonna be going through the experience of 8K on a 65 inch TV, and also experiencing some of the pitfalls of being such an early adopter of such bleeding edge technology. Wow, it's thick. It's a thick boy. Look at that. I don't think I've seen a TV this thick in quite some time. I wonder if that has something to do with, they can do like the flush mount. Oh, that's so kind of like, cool. Yeah, they've got the legs just right in here. So if you like mount it, you don't have to worry about losing them. Interesting. You know what I wonder is if it has to do with the powerful backlight that you need to generate, what is it like 3000 yeah, nits 3, peak brightness on this thing? <laughs> so something a lot of people don't know is that the tighter you make the matrix of your LCD, the harder it is to beam light through it because the more of the actual screen area is covered by, you know, opaque things like wires. So I would guess they need one heck of a backlight to get that kind of brightness. Uh, okay, now what? I guess just lift it up. Yeah, we probably should read how to do it, but uh, well, it's too late for that now. The ship has sailed. You put your left TV in, you put your left TV out. Put your left TV in and... So wait, do you have multiple spots that you can put it? Just like here or oh, there? Oh yeah, how about that? All right. Where cool. do you want to go? Let's go with the wide stance. That's what I was going. Oh geez. Do you ever just think that you probably should have read the instructions? Do you ever think that you as the writer for this video probably should have read the instructions? Did it. <laughs> it needs a screw, doesn't it? It definitely needs a screw, but it also probably should just like go in. Uh-huh. Um, so where are those screws? Ah. Well. There we go. There's your problem. Oh, that's a heavy one connect box. <laughs> and the manual. Hey, now we've got it. Wow, you can really tell this thing needs cooling though. And if the number of heat pipes that I can see through the back of this grill at the rear of the TV <laughs> is anything to go by, it takes some serious power. I wonder how close they were to just like strapping a fan on the back. <laughs> you know, I gotta say, as someone who cares more about performance and features than, like, than thinness, <clears throat> I'm actually pleased as punch that we're getting a TV that's like, you know what? All the brightness, all the resolution. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to see the 3000 nits. That'll be the brightest display I've ever seen, for sure. Yeah, unless you count like those displays at like Vegas. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> so our power for the whole beast comes in here and then all your inputs, including networking, audio, uh, right, USB, all this stuff over here, all routed through this single cable along with power up to the TV. It's no secret that I love it. I've said that a lot of times and I don't love it any less today than I did before. Well, I don't know, let's just turn it on. Did you notice that the screen is relatively matte? Oh yeah. Like it's not that glossy. Apparently Samsung has like the best anti-reflective filters in the business. Yeah, cause we have like filming lights behind the TV and it's actually shocking how little of it gets reflected through, like especially yeah. the, uh, like there's an LED array light that's through that window. If you sit where I am, you see it? Oh, wow, yeah. And then like, look at how bright it is directly. Like that is a shockingly small amount of light reflected back at us. Part of what Samsung's done that's special on this TV is they're using a VA panel, but one with a different configuration. So you don't get that same color shift at an extreme angle. So it's kind of IPS-like in that respect, but it also just has this really sharp VA-like contrast. And then of course the, the matte screen that 
It's really good. So I've actually watched this clip quite a few times as a, um, like a demo clip. And it actually looks really good. Bearing in mind, of course, that this is just 4K. And just like the lines and even like the hairs and stuff are really good. Of course, what we really want to do is jump to 8K resolution. So let's fire up the NVIDIA control panel and see what happens. Because remember, this is an HDMI 2.0 connection. So it's not even showing up in the drop down here. We're going to have to create ourselves a custom res here. Oh. oh. It just worked. It just worked. Well, that was easy. Okay, so let's have a look at this puppy. So this is a three hour, 50 second clip. No, that's three minutes and 50 seconds. And it's nine gigs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the actual one's like 105 gigs. So theoretically, this is basically as high definition as it gets. Because this is shot on one of our red 8K cameras and it's output at 8K resolution. Now, I will say the bitrate could be higher because you can also see some like- Pretty brutal artifacting in spots. <laughs> brutal compression. We can try like a red file if you want to, but- Hey, that sounds pretty good. Oh, our poor computer, that's right. <laughs> uh, I forgot about that. Yeah, we don't have 10 gig on this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even ignoring that, our poor CPU is at 100%. Wow. <laughs> hey. Uh, sure, I get. <laughs> wow, look at this. It looks like it's my desktop background. Poor Windows just has no idea what to do with this resolution. 500% scaling. <laughs> Here's our start menu. <laughs> I wonder if the TV is scaling it or something, though. Yeah. Oh. Interesting. We are now on the latest driver. So we're gonna bump it to 4K. Yeah, that's looking pretty 4K. -y. We're gonna- Oh, uh, color. Oh, are there actual options now? There are, yeah. Okay, so maybe this will help. Uh, so hold on, 7680 by 4320. Yeah. Test it. Okay, does that look native? Nope. Okay, but that's fine, because we're not in the fourth input, so go ahead and chuck it on the fourth input, and let's see if it works this time. No signal. Damn it. Okay. All right. Netflix it is. <laughs> A shot like this with the penguins, you can really appreciate the finer detail. And I will say, compared to the early days of 4K upsampling, even with the birds flying in different directions here, Actually, one of the shots of the birds from the original planet Earth was like my classic yeah. <laughs> why upscaling shouldn't be a thing examples. While this they're flapping, really you can see they're handling it just way better. It's almost like TVs have undergone you know, 10 generations of processing upgrades since then. Okay, so where we left off yesterday, we were having a pretty decent 4K to 8K upsampled experience, but we weren't able to get true 8K working. However, yeah, we were talking to the guys at Artings and we should be able to get real full blown Z's 8K on the go and 4K 120. Really? Yeah. Massive shout out to those guys. Um, however, apparently there's a bit of a process. Why don't you uh, walk us through this? So the first thing we have to do is when we plug in a device, we have to go through the setup wizard. No skipping it. Correct, yeah. Otherwise, for whatever reason on input four, it just doesn't work. So then you need to do signal plus, enable that. Cool. Uh, that this that just broke did a something. Thing. Uh, we're just not gonna worry about that. Yeah, let's just proceed then. Yeah. Okay. So then you need to do the custom resolution utility and hit reset all. Right, but don't actually use the custom resolution utility. Don't try to do it in the NVIDIA driver. It's a bad time. Just this reset all feature. And then we go to display settings, advanced display settings, display adapter properties, list all modes. Oh, and now we have a, all of these guys here. A big old list in there. Now it seems to work best if you do 8K 29 Hertz first. Yeah. 
and hit apply. That looks pretty sharp. Yeah, so that's real AK right there. Real AK! Well, nice. Brandon, Brandon, come look, come look. <laughs> it's pretty funky. So then you want to just go list all modes again and go to AK30. Okay. Whatever reason, if you go to that first, sometimes the system just stops working. I don't know why, but it's a thing. And there we go. We have full blown Z's AK3420. So you're not getting the full color everything. You're not getting the full color depth. You're not getting HDR, but for better or for worse, you are driving 33 million pixels 30 times a second through your display, if you're into that sort of thing. And I have to say, it looks pretty damn good. It looks really sharp. Like that text is just like, it's something else. For a display of this size, 4K is effective to about 3.8 feet. So that's about right here. So 8K, you can do two feet before you see pixels. So that's like here. All right, so this is it. This is our first 8K playback experience on our 8K TV with 8K footage. It's sharp. Beautiful shot, Brandon, by the way. Okay, so just for fun, before we play games, can I do what I had wanted to do before and set it to 100% scaling? Yes. <laughs> okay, then. That's pretty comical. This is so ridiculous. I, look how much I have to move my mouse just to get it across the screen. One. Two. <laughs> but it should still be sharp. Damn. And it is. The system works. Okay, so why don't we do something different this time? We'll fire up City Skylines? Yeah. This is like such a great example. It's like you can really make out the people walking around on the street even oh, yeah. from this vantage point. Like in that park right there. So next up is Forza. So dynamic render quality ultra, 7680 by 4320. Man, that's a crazy number to look at. 30 FPS, all right, let's see this. Let's go to benchmark. <laughs> like there's rain, like it looks like water droplets. Yeah, like it's pretty easily like the best graphics I think I've ever seen. The sharpness is crazy. Like even without anti-aliasing enabled, you can see this license plate is a perfect example normally of the staircase effect as it tilts back and forth, but it's just crystal clear. And we actually managed 30 FPS. <laughs> hey, 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 now the actual frame times, uh, there was definitely some stutter in there. So my friends, are you going to be gaming in AAA titles with a smooth 60 FPS experience at 8K anytime soon? Uh, probably not, but is 8K at a TV size an absolutely eyeball popping experience? The answer is definitely yes. And sometime in the next year or two, you may even get a chance to experience it once Samsung sends out the upgraded boxes with HDMI 2.1 and Japan <laughs> broadcast the 2020 Olympics in 8K. So there you go. That's the way forward for 8K. So thanks for watching guys. Thanks to Samsung for sponsoring this video and letting us have this very early look at the 8K experience. If you guys disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Because let's face it, you are that person who wants to be the first one with an 8K panel on the block, regardless of whether you can hook anything up to it. Uh, also linked in the video description is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join.